a summer cold. So, uh, Alexander, how are you? Good. Alejandro, how are you, buddy? I'm good, a little I'm foggy headed today. Yeah, so no, now we actually have, uh, I, I'm also having a cold. Uh, did, yeah. Did you go get tested? Did, should you go get tested when you have a cold? I mean, who knows what you have, right? Sorry, I missed you there. It logged me in and then out again. Oh, I mean, did you go get tested? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I so what happened was is that I went to, for first proper holiday in since October of uh, 2020. So we went to Croatia. So it's like 32 degrees, like next to the coast, uh, you know, swimming in the sea every day and so on. But wow. my, my little boy, he's three years old. Uh, and um, he got something at nursery. But to fly out, and to fly back in, uh, you need to do all these tests. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're negative on both on flying out and then on flying in. And yeah. uh, according to the UK government, you need to do a, a, a third test. Well, you, you'll do a third test when you arrive. So I'm going to do another one, uh, like a PCR test in the okay, next buddy. one to two days. Hope everything's okay. So, you yeah. know, I do remember uh, from the last interview, um, you presented VIX and you also talked about August. And so here we are, that yeah. there could be some volatility. I mean, it's showing up in other instruments, showing up in gold. And did you want to share your screen? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. I, I see your brokerage firm on there. Oh, yeah. ATFX. That's, uh, yes. Yeah. I was surprised to see that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I represent ATFX. Uh, right. So uh, let me see. You should be able to see my screen now. Okay. Ethereum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you were talking about the VIX, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, volatility is a bit tricky, like, the, in, in, in the summertime, just in general, I think, is, uh, you know, people people get really excited about summer, but really, it's, it's just time not to trade, really. Um, I noticed, at least. Um, yeah. I, what I'm focusing on right now, like, I because I, I was way last week, so I was trading a bit of Aussie dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, so we had, as you might remember, we had a bit of sell-offs uh, just recently. Uh, so, so we had this sort of double bottom range breakout where we slid to the downside here, as you can see, okay. uh, on this daily chart. So I, I shorted on the correction here, kept it for down here, and then I actually hold, held on to it. And then when we move, I think when we moved down here somewhere, here I think it was, I, I, I closed out. Uh, just in the beginning of August because I was not going to be at my desk. So I just have my mobile. So I closed out that position and that was sort of a, a, a bit of a trade on risk off and so on. Um, but what I'm focusing on now, what I notice is that, you know, you have the cryptos being really, really bullish. Yeah. I mean, you, you, if you look at something like Ethereum, for example, but also Bitcoin, you know, things are just going up and up and up. So even on shallow pullbacks, people are quite happy to buy. Um, so you start to get a bit of a vibe like of that maybe the bull market has resumed. Yes. So yeah. so what I'm doing now is actually I bought I bought crypto.com. It's called Crow. So I bought what that. What is Crow? So crypto.com is an exchange broker-ish. Uh, I don't use their services themselves, but a lot of these exchanges like uh, Binance and also like uh, FTX and Crypto.com, um, they have their own coins um, that you can use to pay fees to get reduction on commissions and things like that. And yeah. also some in the case of Binance, they have uh, yeah, the, the coin works uh, uh, a bit like Ethereum does in different applications. So um, you, you you tend to see, um, so, yeah, so so this is, it's a different way of investing. So okay. the thing is this though, well, you know, it's the correlation between all these cryptocurrencies are super high, all of them. So um, obviously one should try to avoid some of the sort of uh, very, there, there are even smaller projects like this, you know, I, like uh, when you had uh, uh, DeFi, decentralized finance, um, when that was cropping up, like you had Panco Pancake Swap, and they had some other alternatives as well. I tried some of them actually, but they, they literally lost like 99.9% .9 of their value. 
so if you can avoid like the smallest of coins, I think everything else is pretty much the same to some extent. So what I'm looking for is I'm just looking for patterns. So say, for example, that Bitcoin, like I thought Bitcoin, I was hoping for on this daily chart here that Bitcoin would go up and get rejected by the June 15 high and then push it down and then up. So then we would have like a double double top break. Um, um, that didn't happen, but we're still bullish. So when I see that Bitcoin is bullish, I will either try Bitcoin or I will try to trade something else. In the case of um, crypto.com, you have a bit of an inverse and shoulders and alternatively an uh, ascending triangle, depending on how you look at it. But this could be like head, left, right shoulder. And then, you know, you had the break here. Now, full disclosure, I did trade it here already and I got stopped out, but then I, I bought it here a bit later and I'm still holding on to this one. Um, so this is one example. You have other things like uh, waves, for example, uh, which is in a bit of a rectangle action range, sort of. You have Atom USD, which I think I, I prefer even more, which is a yeah. bit of a ascending it's triangle. Ascending triangle, yeah. Yeah. This one is more clear cut because the levels are the same levels. You got one, two, three levels uh, there. And if this would break to the upside, right? So obviously a lot of people would measure the base. Then you get a certain uh, target, which which could potentially be applied here. But most of the time I will just take the midpoint of the pattern like this. And then uh, we, we're looking for a, for a push to the upside. So uh, have you turned to these because the legacy markets have dried up ranges, et cetera? Yes. Um, yes. They're, 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 I mean, yes, that, that's true. Right now, legacy markets are not really doing too much. I'm hoping yeah. that come September and um, there will be more action. There are some interesting things, though. In, in How about um, what happened with yields last week <clears throat> uh, and the week before trying to, uh, there was an attempt on the 10 year to bottom at uh, 113, went up, and then on the um, NFP, uh, it also, before the NFP, it traded down there and reversed and followed through. Yeah. So um, what do you think of this being the end of the correction of yields coming down and we're on our way back up to maybe the old highs? I mean, the, the NFP number was really good. And for me, I personally think it's a, it's a matter of if and not like, like it's, it's, they will reduce... The quantitative easing program. I mean, that that's going to be gone at one point. I don't really want to think so much about raising interest rates because that could literally take like two, three more years. But but that's going to come to an end. This EC monetary uh, policy we need to come to an end very soon, and that would obviously put some pressure on on interest rates. Um, and if not inflation, uh, you know, uh, we will you know continue to to uh, circle back and and, and keep uh, inflation high, right? Uh, so. Yeah, I think ultimately up, and I think from a, just from a dollar perspective, if we look at it from that perspective, I don't actually follow the yields like that much. But from a dollar perspective, and, and the dollar index, for example, I, I am still a long-term dollar bull. I do think that it makes a lot of sense for the dollar to gain. Now, obviously, the market is it's not really it's not really sort of agreeing with me, and unfortunately, we're stuck in in some sort of a range here as well, yeah. and. When, when this happens, I just zone out. I just sort of ignore it a bit until until we start to see some sort of move. You know? I like that. Nice look. Yeah. Uh, but, any commentary on how fragile the gold and silver markets were to give up so much ground uh, during an Asian session? I mean, it started here in the States last week, but last yeah. night was a massacre. Yeah, I saw that. I was... Uh, it's, it's, okay. I was quite surprised to see that actually. Uh, it's, it's a very sharp drop. It, it feels like someone doesn't really know exactly what they were doing, or you just had a cascade of stop loss orders triggered. Uh, you, you'll see this a lot in cryptos because yeah. the liquidity is so low. Like even myself, sometimes when I try to push an order, like I will spike the price on the five minute chart or something like that. Um, I did that in the beginning, by the way. It's because you can't push through a big order. So you need to say, okay, I want to buy for 10% now, 10% there, or you need to put a limit order on it. And it feels like this is a little bit of what happened. 
And then it's summertime as well, it's Asian session. I personally think this is the time of false breakouts, like and false moves, like this time yeah. of the year. So I wouldn't Don't trust be, anything. Yeah. I, w- I wouldn't trust this one. I, we have some funny looking pattern, triangle pattern here, you know, that does suggest we could go down to 1852. But it wouldn't surprise me at all if like this candle will be pushed higher and then it looks like a false move and then suddenly everybody's going to get short squeezed up and then we sort of get stuck in the middle here again. Yeah. So I would, I would, I would, would you, there's different ways you can trade this one if you wanted to. I mean, maybe give it a day's rest and if we're still sort of trading around these levels, then you could potentially, you know, short uh, with stops above here for this to go down and maybe try to test this low again. Uh, but but I would give this a, a, a bit of a break. How's copper look to you, Alejandro? Uh, let's take a look at that. I think I think I looked at it this morning, and uh, it's like it's trying to put in a right shoulder of you think a so potential no? head and shoulders top. I was wondering if you were showing that too. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I think this one should be. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, it's definitely. Yeah, you get you. If you mean the right and head and left, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it is. Also right, so we're getting a rest in things like oil and copper, economically sensitive uh, commodities. Uh, they're worried about Delta. Maybe not as much in the Western developed world, but maybe Asia. I think as well. You know, you see what happens is is that when you had this aggressive like economic growth. Yeah. Like the ISMs were going up and up and up. Um, so when, when that's going up and then when that ultimately peaks, that's just when production is at its highest. And then uh, one would argue that all of these like coppers should be at their highest point at that, at that situation. And after that, what happens is it cools down, right? Because you go from, you know, a lot of people losing a lot of jobs to a lot of people getting a lot of jobs. But then the ever increment growth after that becomes less and less. Right. And I think that's a little bit what we what we're seeing right here right now. Um, okay. But what so I find quite interesting though is that you know you have things like the Dow Jones, you know, being bullish, and there are some opportunities there for people that can trade these markets. Like you have a, a bit of an ascending triangle like pattern here as well. Yeah. Like uh, you have sort of the break here if you if you if you consider this high. If you can take that into account, but also these levels here, and you have a very similar situation here in the uh, German DAX, and it's always good, yeah. to, you know, when you have something relatively similar on both sides of the Atlantic, right. uh, where you have a big ascending triangle, and then you have something more exotic uh, that I also sometimes consider, which is the South African Stock Market Index, where you have a nice, beautiful rectangle here as well. So it. It's, it's interesting, you know, I might give it a shot, put a bit of risk, maybe like one and a half percent at most uh, to see okay. if, if, if these stock indices can go upwards. Okay, yeah. buddy. <clears throat> what, what's the best way for people to um, pay attention to what you do on Twitter or be involved in your webinars that you do and learn from you? What's, what's the best way? So there is uh, obviously my Twitter. So I do a lot of content there for uh, on behalf of ATFX. Um, so I do two videos a week uh, where I talk about patterns and different things that I like and follow. So okay. you can you can check that out. It's on Alex FX double zero. Okay. And uh, nice. you know, if, yeah, and if one would find that interesting, like if you want to learn more about that that specific trading strategy. Then I, I have my own website called londiniumfx.com. So what I do there is that every morning I take a look at the different patterns I, I, I have identified. And then when I trade, I send a message via Telegram telling people that, you know, look, I'm, I'm trading this now. Um, I'm putting one and a half percent risk. That's usually where I ri- uh, risk. Uh, and then, uh, you know, if I get stopped out, I'll let people know. If I get, get a winner, I, like any small changes as well, I'll, I'll tell people. Uh, okay. um, so it's good for someone that likes to follow trends and, and I trade on the daily and the four hour charts just for someone as well that maybe wants to trade a few times per week but not necessarily every day um, and it's a trend following system so last year for example we did really really good um, this year we're up 
I think about 49% or something like that. We're up a little bit higher at one point. But when you're a trend follower, it's important to understand it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's almost like I'm running like a, like a retail shop, you know, and, and over Christmas, you like you do like a lot of sales. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little bit like that. You know, some years you're going to have triple digit returns and some other right. years it's going to be maybe double digit. And sometimes it could be literally like three months with really no profits, sometimes right. a bit more. And I have had losing years as well. Uh, but overall, since, since sort of 2014, um, since I started to, to use the system and various variations, um, we're doing about 33% return per year. And uh, Nice work. Thank you very much, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, for coming here and sharing. Uh, I know you wanted to go crypto on us, so uh, <laughs> yeah. because that's where the action is right now. But uh, we got some good looks and yeah, <clears throat> kind of understand your style that when you have Bitcoin strength, you could look for uh, some of the other candidates to ride that trend. That's and, correct. Yeah, and, uh, and you're constructive on the dollar still. So appreciate yeah. you being with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me on. Okay, buddy. So my trading warrior brother, Alejandro Zambrano, you can follow him at AlexFX00 on Twitter. And um, an excellent technician and tactician and experienced guy. So I appreciate it very much, Alejandro. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much. Speak soon. Okay, guys. And uh, that's going to be a wrap. Uh, David Hunter will be with us tomorrow. David, fine. I believe tomorrow and um, don't just count your pips, count your blessings and we'll see everyone uh, for turnaround Tuesday. Okay. You're very welcome. Adios. <laughs>